Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the policy committee uh, meeting this evening. Uh, there are two items that we have on the on the agenda tonight. One item is a follow up from our last meeting, um, which uh, relates to public comment at at board meetings. And the second item is an introduction to the AI policy. And when we talk about AI, we're talking about artificial intelligence. So um, I believe that Mary and or Bob can um, put the slot deck on the um, screen and share the screen. And I believe Bob is gonna get us started. And for the first item, what we're really looking for is direction from the board about how they want to proceed or how we want to proceed in terms of the policy recommendation that's coming forward from PSBA. And so Bob, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Sure, thank you. Um, so I will go to the next slide and click on the link. Um, again, this has had no modifications since last meeting. Uh, the text in blue is highlight, uh, highlighting the changes. Uh, the major changes uh, as stated last month are adding employees and students. Um, that's the recommendation that PASBA had. Um, the other major- uh, Hey, Bob, I'm so sorry. Can you kind of, whoever's in, is controlling this, can they enlarge it a little bit more, larger? Because sure. I, I can't go any further. Is that good? That's great, thank you. Sure, sorry about that. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll restart then just so that everybody can um, follow along. Um, all the text in blue are recommended language changes. Um, the more majority of it is just language. Um, the actual changes, um, the highlights are in this paragraph right here under eligible people that are eligible to speak at board meetings during public comment. Uh, the recommended language includes employees and students, which are not currently included. Um, and then the other <laughs> item that is a change um, that is a major change and not just language change is having to um, submit a request to speak ahead of time and then to sign in um, when you have arrived um, and that you are ready to give your public comment. Everything else is pretty much um, just language changes um, to be more clear, um, but not anything that would change our process. Um, so with that, um, thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Now <laughs> at our last meeting, um, and Jennifer, if you would, cause the folks that are here tonight aren't, weren't on here. And I just really want everyone to get a sense of, you know, exactly how you felt at last meeting and, um, you know, and so everybody can hear what it is that, um, how you feel. Um, do you mind repeating? You're referring to Ms. Hoff, correct? Ms. Hoff, yes. Hey, uh, thanks, Ms. Hopkins. <laughs> I'm sorry about <laughs> yeah, the informal, informal introduction. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no problem. Um, thanks, uh, Ms. Hopkins. So, yeah, you're correct. I, you know, I, I want to say that our citizens and taxpayers have always been fantastic partners in our school district. And I feel like making any changes are completely unnecessary. Um, I have accessibility concerns about the submitted document, how that would go for them. The second one, the meeting sign in. First of all, the form needs to say if they're a taxpayer, but same accessibility um, issues, you know, with with language, handwriting, neurodivergent, and stuff like that. I just don't think it's necessary. I think we can take it all out and run our business like we do currently. That's all. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure your your voice was heard, and I appreciate you repeating that. Thanks so much. Um, does anybody else have any comment or concerns or uh, 
Mike, I have a comment. Good evening, everyone. Hi, um, Ms. Luella, yes. How would you go about this? You are saying that you are going to ask them to sign in before and address the issue that they want to speak on before the meeting. So how do you how how are you going to go about doing this? I think it's not saying it's not necessary, but suppose someone comes in and at the last minute, you know, they have an idea, they have a question and they want to discuss it. So how would you address that issue? I mean, I've seen meetings that are where they do this. And I just think it's really not necessary for the public to do that. It's maybe to me, it's like limiting, you know, actually what they have to say or can say. I mean, it gives them that feeling that we are limited to what we ha can say because it's written, you know, we have written this down and giving it to, I guess it would be Bob before the meeting. Yeah, so if this policy were changed to the wording as presented, uh, my office would have to come up with a procedure um, that would set a time frame for which everything was due, likely day of the meeting by four o'clock, um, just throwing out a random time. Not sure if that would be the time, but just giving an example. Um, and then we would have to um, create a system to collect that information. So likely a posting on the website with a Google sheet um, that would feed us through it, everything. Um, so it's possible, but again, what's up for discussion, as you guys had mentioned, is does that limit access after that four o'clock time period? And whether that is um, what we would like to move forward with. So I'm asking you would make that decision as to whether you want to move forward with what you have, what they have addressed to you. So, so every item that they submit um, would be addressed. I mean, unless it's, you know, something completely profane or, or you know, something like yeah. that. But if okay. it was a legitimate item that warrants public comment, then all items would be brought to the board. Um, so it wouldn't be me selecting, it would be more, me more just organizing, selecting an order, and then calling people up or calling people into the Zoom instead of kind of how, like, I don't say we do it randomly now, but it, it would just create a different type of organization and um, to the order of public comment. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Oh, thank you, Miss Luella. Anyone else? I'm actually processing how it's done in a public forum. Mm -hmm. where you fill out the form. Um, it does appear to be much more cumbersome and complicated when you do it virtually. Um, I think that it um, stifles to a degree, um, participation. Um, and so looking at what's recommended and the implementation of, of from where we are to what's being recommended, um, I was just trying to process, how would you do? I, I would say comfortably um on a virtual in a virtual setting i can see it um publicly because i witness it 
um, in council meetings and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But just, I think it's it's going to be a challenge. Thank you, Ms. Um, Cook Henry. Anyone else? I know this is a um um a edit an update by our PSBA. And you guys know me, y'all know I'm all about policies and procedures and you know uh, Robert's Rules of Order and how do we, you know, stick to those certain things. Um so at our last meeting, I didn't have a comment, but I think today I do. And how I feel about it is, is that we really have a great group of attendees that come to our meetings virtually, as well as in person. Um, I, I think our constituents are respectful and that when we need to use Robert's Rules of Order or when we you need to use um, policies, that I think most people are good with it. Um, I think having to do the uh, signing in and all that stuff, and then, you know, I, I think that's maybe a little bit more um, than we need. Um, but I still feel that, and especially when we get into debated, I don't want to say arguments, but de debated conversations, that we still need the, um, we still need the, the three minute timer. Um, I think we need to, I think we have that already. I think, I'm not sure if it's two minutes or three minutes, um, but I do know the language for PSBA is three minutes, but I think we need to continue with that. Um, and that, um, but I don't know so much as, um, signing in and having folks, um, you know, be responsible with, you know, signing in and, and giving us questions beforehand. And I also believe that Dr. B. Coates and his, his staff and administration, gives answers in a timely manner so i think i think we don't have to i think for us we don't have to go that far um that's just my 22 cents um anybody else all right well to hearing none i would like to do a recommendation um uh, and that we would adopt the the language, but I think we need we can um, we can um, okay I can't see what I'm talking about now. Can you put that back up the the slide about the okay so come down. And I think it's right there, right? Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. sign yeah. So we don't need that that language. The sign in request to comment. I don't feel we need that. Um. Can you show me one more about the statement of the presiding officer? Sure. Um. So, I believe. So the statement of the presiding officer. Um, would basically just be right, the, okay. the to... rules. Um, right. So we, we couldn't provide it because we didn't know what where we were going to land, but we essentially we would have a statement that would be read um, every meeting if we chose to do so, basically saying, oh yeah, you have to state your name, uh, where you reside or where you're a taxpayer from, and that you have three minutes, please keep it to agenda items at that time. And then when it's open comment, you know, um, I think we do that anyway, or at least some of us do. I know, you know, when 
I like to be respectful of people's time. At least I know I do. And mm-hmm. so I, I, I feel like each of us presides our meeting where it's not going over so much time, right? And so I think we're okay with that language. I just really don't like the language of us having to have people sign in ahead of time. So I would like to recommend and go for our board uh, board vote for the um, and recommend that we adopt the language but remove the language of sign having to sign in. Anybody disagree? And Madam Chair, I would. Um, imagine for whatever reason if we needed to revisit this topic we could correct absolutely so um for now we don't see um foresee it necessary to have folks make their request prior to a meeting um to ask a question to engage um, but maybe at some point in time, it could potentially be necessary. It's just not at this time. I, I agree. Um, so Miss Luella, Miss Irie, Miss Cook Henry, do you all agree we can strike that? language out i don't see did miss um i'll come back yes i agree miss hopkins okay i, don't I see definitely that. agree thank South you Ms. Also. miss cook henry what about yes ma'am okay um and i don't see miss hoff on the line i think she got disconnected or may have left so yeah let's let's um um dr Beacos, if you can um Yep. So what we will do, Ms. Hopkins, is we will make the necessary adjustments based upon the discussion tonight and make sure that the correct updated policy is in the committee of the whole meeting. Thank you. Um, and we will proceed accordingly. Thank you, sir. You are more than welcome. Okay. I believe, I believe we're going to move to our next item. Okay. Um, and this is more of a discussion. So let me just open it up. Um, and I'll also say in the event that you see me exit at around seven, I am also on the equity, I guess, symposium conference that Representative Regina, I mean, um, Gina Carey is hosting tonight and that starts at seven. I did tell them I might be a few minutes late, but the reason why we're bringing this um, artificial intelligence um, discussion item to the policy committee is because as all of us know, this is something that is not going away, but I also feel as though that we as a district need to embrace artificial intelligence and then determine how is it best used to support us as a school district, us as a school, us as staff, us as administrators. Mm -hmm. uh, even today, the DCIU had a symposium about this with members from across the county. So it's something that I think a lot of people are looking into. I just wanna make sure that we are able to provide at least a frame for our belief around artificial intelligence, how we would um, move it forward in our district and how it could potentially be used. I think Mary has done some great work thus far um, with pulling a diverse group of individuals throughout the district together to talk about what this looks like for our district, but I did wanna at least start having a conversation with the board. This is just some general language that we may think about putting into a policy we will bring this back in June based upon the discussion tonight so that we would be able to create and have a policy in place before the 24-25 school year with the understanding that there's a lot that we don't know. And so sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And I think a lot of districts and individuals are figuring this out as we go along the way. So just wanted to preface and set the frame. And um, Dr. Agnew, I'm going to turn it over to you now to just walk through what's in this document. We may need to make it a little bit larger. Yes, oh, okay. <clears throat> um, give me a second. Okay. 
Did that help? Is that large enough? No, that's good. Well, at least for my end, it's good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So um, what this policy focuses on is our approach to integrating um, AI into our you know, educational system. And what it does is it acknowledges the benefits, but then also um, recognizes the potential risks like plagiarism and bias. So we want people to use it, but we want to, them to use it within guidelines and we want to support its use, but we want it to be responsible use um, by providing guidelines for curriculum integration, professional development, avoiding misrepresentation, um, promoting ethical awareness and digital citizenship, and ensuring developmental appropriateness for students. Um, but we also want to consider and safeguard data privacy and security um, of our students as well. So, um, the introduction is just a basic overview, and then this really focuses on the benefits of um, artificial intelligence in uh, K-12 education. So it goes over and it talks about how you can um, enhance the quality and diversity of learning materials. You can provide individualized instruction. Um, you can foster creativity and critical thinking. You can encourage students to explore the potential of AI. And you can also improve efficiency and operation of school division, which would be for staff, um, for teachers and for staff. <clears throat> and we want to support the integration, but we also want to acknowledge that it's constantly changing. And so we want to be able to provide the resources that teachers and students would need in order to um, responsibly use AI. And we also want to recognize the potential for bias. So uh, this is a big issue with AI um, because what it does is it pulls from um, sources on the net. So it often will include biases um, based upon that. Another thing that is an issue with AI when you consider bias is non-native speaking um, English language learners, it will often flag them as so like say I'm a non-English language student and I write an essay, that might be flagged by an AI detector because I'm using weird speech patterns. So we really want to make teachers aware of that and make them aware of that when they're marking um, things so that they're not um, you know, um, biased against students because of the AI detection software is not working correctly. Um, we want to establish safe and responsible uses for it within the school district. And that's not only for students and teachers, but also for staff. So staff across the district can use it to really help um, streamline a lot of the tasks that people complete. But we really have to consider what are we uploading? Um, what are the potential risks that we're taking by uploading things? And um, we really want to consider like what you're using it for, how you're using it, and what kind of information you're sharing. Because any information that you share, it goes up into the AI tool because that's how they are able to generate more um, answers for you. And then the biggest thing is that we want to provide education and training to everybody so that they understand how to use it and how to use it correctly instead of not have, you know, saying nobody can use it at all. Um, and these are some of the guidelines, um, like where we want to do it. So curriculum integration, professional development, avoiding misrepresentation, um, making people aware of appropriate content and ethical awareness and um, developmental appropriate, appropriateness. So, um, you know, what is a proper tool for students to use at different stages? and especially data privacy and security, because I think that's something people fail to recognize is that when you use any type of AI tool, it is taking the information you provide it and it is you putting that into its um, data bank so that it can use that for other people that would be using that tool. So that's just a basic overview. What I tried to focus on when creating this policy was um, recognizing the benefits, acknowledging the risks, um, considering the ethical considerations, um, setting up guidelines for responsible use, education and training, and a commitment to being um, innovative within the district. 
Thank you, Dr. Agnew. Now I have a few questions. Um, and and if anyone else, if just um just raise your hand and I'll I will acknowledge you. Now the first question I have is, now did I miss it? And I could have possibly missed it. So what are the repercussions? And like say for instance, I, I remember reading plagiarism. So what if a child, a scholar, um is caught plagiarizing with this AI programming? So I think you would you would address it just like you would with any thing else under our academic integrity policy. Um, so that we have an academic integrity policy, it's yes, with the code of conduct. Mm -hmm. So I think if you um, if you uh, have a student that is using AI, um, that you would address it through the academic integrity policy. But I think with AI, the other thing that you want to do because we've actually run into this in the cyber academy mm -hmm. is. Um, because it is so different from what students are used to, you really need to um, educate them about mm -hmm. what is and what is not um, cheating using AI. And I feel another key component is also educating the parents um, because the parents and the students, this is a whole new world yeah. to them. Yeah. And so yeah. they, they, I feel like a lot of people don't even realize that what they're doing is violating the academic integrity. So that's why the education part is so important to educate teachers, students, and parents on, um, you know, what is and is not cheating with the use of AI because it's very murky right now. Right, 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 right. Which is why I had the, the question. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, I know we have to cite as you should know, because you just recently graduated, right? Yeah. So we always got to cite something all the time when we do. Um, how does that work when you're using AI? So how does a student or scholar cite with AI? So for example, if you're on ChatGPT and you create something within ChatGPT, it will offer you the citation. So you oh. can actually cite that you, you used it. So that would be another thing that we would look at like um, with what what tools do you want to use? You want to be able to use a tool that's going to be able to provide you a citation. Oh, so okay. um, yeah, if you go on ChatGPT and you create something, right in the bottom right hand corner, it uh, uh you can click on it and it'll offer you the citation. So just oh. like with anything else, if if you you know if you you can't like you know use something whole uh -huh. when you're citing, you can't use the whole entire thing and cite it. Uh -huh. um, but if you use parts of it, you you should still cite it. And so that would right. be another thing for education to okay. let students know that just like any other source, you need to cite that you use this. That's right. That's right. Well, that's good at the cites for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get into AI and, and learn a little <laughs> bit more with my old self trying to get figure out how to use all that. So when I go to when I go get my doctorate and be like you and Dr. B Coast with my doctorate, I got my cites already. <laughs> Um, doctor, anybody um, else have a question? Oh, hey, Miss Miss Val, go ahead. Um, and it's I often hate to to ask people to do more than they already do, and but this is a, a ask, just some type of symposium, some type of workshop, some type of educational offering for the wider. Um, you know, we talking about parents um, and community. I would love to um, learn more um, about this topic. And so um, there goes the ask <laughs> how we might be able to present some of what we're talking about in lay terms, but introduce it, make people more aware, comfortable with um, this topic. So yeah, one, I, it's interesting I definitely that you, agree. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mary. No, I was just going to say, I definitely agree. I feel like that's going to be a key, key factor moving forward is to inform the parents, um, like almost like a parent workshop, um, so that they are aware of, um, you know, what AI is and how it should be used responsibly. And I'm just asking that you expand it. To... Oh, to the whole community. <laughs> yeah, anybody right. could come. So, okay. So one of the, excuse me, one of the things that came up today when we were um, talking about this, I mentioned earlier the DCIU had a session today with everyone talking about this particular topic. 
And one of the things that they said was, is that they would be offering sessions and information, informational meetings for the larger Delaware County, because all of us are moving toward this, you know, integration of AI. So it's definitely something that we'll be partnering on. Hopefully we'll be able to do something at the beginning of the school year in reference to this particular topic. Thank you. Any further there, questions? Uh, I don't see any hands. I just want to make sure. And I no, don't see I don't, any attendees. So no, I think I that's good. I want to make an announcement. I was at my IU board meeting um, last night. And at the IU board meeting, they are... Um, hold on, because I got to take my background off right yes okay so uh oh yeah there we go am i get it did i get it right mm -hmm. okay so um they're doing a webinar may the 29th um from 6 to 7 30 um it's talking about what is a school board member do they're opening up to free and, and i got plenty of advertisements for everybody. I'm going to screenshot it and send it to the board members. Um, they're offering it to the superintendents as well as assistant superintendents of Delaware County. Um, and, um, and as, uh, yeah, so it's all the board members, school superintendents, school assistant superintendents. For Delaware County, they're free. Um, any board members out of the county that wants to attend and school leaders that want to attend is $25 for them to attend. Um, I think this is something that we might be uh, maybe interested in attending. So I'll send everyone a copy of this. I'll screenshot it and send it to everyone's email and maybe we all could go and, and learn something new. Okay. And Ms. Um, Hopkins, we also have that already in next week's board update. So they'll also get it that way. And we'll keep reminding folks because it would be nice to be represented as uh, the William Penn School District. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other for the good of the board and the committee? Well, hearing none, thank you all for attending um, our policy meeting. And, um, you know, reach out to me if you have anything further. Take care.